So this is my vegan story. About seven years ago, um, I was on my way to work. And in those days, I used to, I was working in a photography shop while I was at uni, studying photography as well. So I was quite busy. And in the mix of that, I was trying to um, get drunk and um, pull women, basically. Um, pull means get with women. Um, so a lot of my time I was sort of working during the day and then drinking till late in the night. But anyway, the, the reason I explain that is because I was on my way to work and I was really sweaty. Um, back in those days I had a, a big sweat problem. Um, so I'd have to wear two t-shirts to cover them up. And I, so I was on my way to work um, to this photography shop, all sweaty, a bit clammy, a bit stressy, probably hung, hung over from the night before. And somebody came up to me and offered me uh, a recipe book. Um, they said, would you like a vegetarian recipe book? I was open-minded at the time. Um, at the time I was still eating meat, a lot of meat every day pretty much, and uh, dairy every day, milk and cereals and stuff. But I was like, yeah, uh, I'm interested in vegetarian food. Sounds good. That book uh, is here. Um, it's called A Higher Taste, A Gourmet Guide a guide to gourmet vegetarian cooking and a karma free diet and I had this book around and I sort of left it in my room um, for a while um, and then I started reading it um, gradually and so combined with these vegetarian recipes it was also um, quotes and sort of things that I hadn't really thought about in depth before so some of the things it talked about was um, saturated fat and cholesterol and how um, the cholesterol is only found in meat and saturated fat is more found in animal products. But basically what was happening is people who were eating um, meat were clogging their arteries. And I was like, that's interesting. And then it sort of brought up the question, are humans uh, herbivores? And I was like, that's interesting. And then it also brought up about BSE. It's the official name for mad cow disease. And what happened was, is that mad cow disease was moving to humans, which the human form is called VCJD, which, um, which kills people basically. So, so in that again, you know, I went through in England, this happened and it's actually still happening in the U S but basically uh, BSE, was affecting people and then people were getting VCJD and people were dying and getting ill and then there was other things about like um, IGF-1 which is an insulin like growth factor that's uh, in animal products um, there's all sorts of other things like Salmonella, E. coli, MRSA, Campylobacter, H1N1, uh, sort of swine flu and bird flu and all these weird diseases and um, bacterias and crazy shit that you don't really want to put in your body. And I was just thinking, okay, so all that is in those, in meat products and animal products. Do I really want to put that into my body? And then the book is, gets even more uh, interesting. It starts talking about karma as well. And it kind of, you know, logically, it doesn't make sense to stab somebody else so that you can eat them, you don't need to. So it just kind of like, is it worth putting them through that suffering, that unhappiness, that shit feeling that, you know, if I go and run at somebody with a knife and stab them, they're gonna like be frightened and then I'm taking their life. And there's no, you know, is me, do I have a need to do that? No, is it right to do that? I personally think no. And so I, I was kind of thinking, well, actually, it's not right to take the life of animals, you know. Um, humans have souls in that we are individuals, so so are animals. Um, so is it right to take their lives for ultimately something to eat? And I was just, all these different things was kind of coming into my mind. On top of that, I also um, read the quotes in the book, and one of them is by Paul McCartney and goes like this. If slaughterhouses had glass walls, everybody would be vegetarian. We feel better about ourselves and better about the animals. No, we're not contributing to their pain. 
So I had this book for a few months and I just left it in my room and I read bits of it. But then uh, one day I was like, I better, I'll just read this all the way through. And then from after reading it, I started thinking deeply about slaughterhouses. And I was like, fuck that, man. A slaughterhouse is a building. It's a company. Well, the, the slaughterhouse is the building of the company that kill animals all day. They just... They slit their throats, they stun them, they, fuck it, it's just weird shit. They cut them up, they skin them. And it's just like, would we do that to humans? You know, like the Holocaust happened. What we're doing now is like an animal Holocaust. It's just fucked. It's just crazy. And I was just like, you know what? I don't want to be a part of that. It doesn't, it doesn't, logically, it doesn't make sense. And so I was all, I was like, okay. How about I start going vegetarian? And then after a while, I did. In amongst in amongst the thinkings about slaughterhouses, there are all these other logical reasons why it's better to at first to go vegetarian and ultimately to go vegan. But first, my initial thoughts were about vegetarian, and it's kind of like the land use, the water use. Um, the, it takes more land to produce animals. It takes more water. It just It's just an uneconomical use of resources. Another thing that this book brought up was the, um, the scarcity, the myth of scarcity that is people put around. They're like, oh, these starving children, these starving people around the world, there's not enough food for them. There is enough food. What we're doing is we are fattening up the animals first. If everybody decided tomorrow that we were going to become an actual, like, humane planet and think about others apart from not how we can make a quick, like, quick money and fucking fuck everyone else. If we actually became a community on Earth, we could decide, okay, we're going to phase out producing meat. And what we can do is we can grow plants for humans first. We can feed everyone. We can, wa we can there's enough water on the planet to feed to get to give everyone water we're just wasting it fattening up these animals who are unhappy these animals are living these really fucked up lives and then we're taking their lives really young the majority of the uh, animals we eat we take their we take their lives really young like like children if you, in sort of a young child it's fucked up so i was like you know what this there's this, this is massive if i put them on the scales like you know, there was a taste on one side and then on the other side was all like land use, water use. It's not right to kill animals. Um, and like all those other things I talked about. And so from from then on, I was like, OK, I was really addicted to meat. So I was like, I'll go pescatarian, um, sort of leave in one bit of meat and then and I've never looked back. So that was seven years ago. I went pescatarian. One of my friends pointed out um, that fish are animals too. And I was like, yep, that makes sense. I'm not going to include them. And then gradually, um, over the years, I watched a few um, slaughterhouse, like a few more slaughterhouse videos. And one of them was earthlings. And I was just like, fuck, man, what the fuck are we doing to these animals? And then I gradually just, um, there was no real, there was no real sort of, um, one point that kind of made me um, choose to go vegan. It just made a lot of sense that I didn't want to contribute to all this suffering of these animals and I didn't need, there's so many alternatives nowadays to veggie burgers, to you can make eggs out of scrambled tofu. And I don't even eat, uh, eat a lot of that stuff now. You don't need it at all. But for those who want the, the familiarity and stuff, you still got your veggie mints, you still got your veggie sausage, you still got your plant milks instead of the breast milk, the udder milk of somebody else, um, which is another whole video in itself. We are not calves. We are not baby animals. We don't, we're not children. We just, we, we no other species drinks, drinks milk after weaning and especially not from another species as well. On top of that, it just, just kind of like weird fucking um, little Britain scenario. Bitty! Bitty, mummy, bitty. We need to, as a species, we need to grow up and stop drinking breast milk, udder milk. And then, so, yeah, so that was, it, it took me about three and a half years to, no, it was about three years to, um, to go vegan. And then from vegan, 
um, because I was so passionate about it and I'd done a lot of research and stuff, I was having a conversation with one of my friends about it and then they're like, you should do a talk. You've got all this information, you should give a talk. So, um, yeah, then I basically started doing talks um, and I've been lucky enough and fortunate enough that people have literally come up to me at the end of the talk and gone like, I'm going vegetarian tomorrow. I'm not drinking dairy anymore because I have no excuses left why I should drink dairy. There's no reason why I shouldn't stop drinking milk. I just have to do it. So I've watched loads of documentaries. A lot of them I have made links to from my website. Um, it'll be in the description below um, or you can just go to my website and there's a like a massive recommended list, videos, um, doctors, um, healthy eating, um, food ideas, um, documentaries, like I said. And a couple of documentaries that stood out for me. There's so many amazing ones out there. Um, but basically one of them, because I always thought that I was an environmentalist. I didn't want to fuck up the planet. And then I watched documentaries like Meet the Truth um, and Cowspiracy. And I was just like, fucking hell, you can't, you can't eat meat and call yourself an environmentalist. It just doesn't make sense. It's a more economical use of resources to just grow plants first. Um, and there's crazy things like dead zones with fucking up the oceans. Um, more CO2, more methane, more nitrous oxide, um, just loads. Basically, just go and watch. Uh, Meet the Truth is free online, and the documentary Cowspiracy is on Netflix for free. Uh, also, cowspiracy.com have all the facts on why you know why animal agriculture is the number one destroyer, uh, is the, the biggest destroyer of the Amazon rainforest, um, even more than palm oil. Just crazy stuff, like all, all the statistics about how much water they use, how much land use is uh, CO2 amounts, and all sorts, basically, just go and check it out. Yeah, so I started doing the talks, and I've been into, I'm quite into beatboxing, so I was like, how can I, how can I integrate beatboxing and veganism? What I started doing was beatboxing as vegbox, so I could get a vegan message spread through beatboxing, basically. One of the things that I've been trying to develop um, for a while is language and the use of um, words and writings and poems. Because the quote that I said at the start stuck with me. You know, those words stuck with me, if slaughterhouses had glass walls. So what I've started doing is creating my own quotes, um, my own poetry. So I've got one... Um, it's called, I'm not a slave, I'm a cow. And other things, like I try and introduce um, as much as I can the word rapey or rape into uh, general conversations with people because for cows to be impregnated to produce milk and other mammals, um, they are forced to, it's either, either a, somebody puts their arm inside the cow's vagina and anus um, to to help it in, weird shit. Um, a semen is then put into the cow or they're forced to have sex with a strange bull that they don't even know, you know what I mean? Both of them are weird, fucked up and rapey basically. Like, you know, putting your arm inside a cow and then spraying semen is rape. That's, you know, having sex, you're making the cow pregnant, you're making them the other mammal, maybe it's a sheep, maybe it's a goat, whatever mammal it is, that is rape. If we're going to talk about animals in the context that like animals uh, can have cancer, they can have they have eyes, they have they have children, like they have their own puppies, um, they have personalities. Then having sex with animals is rape. Um, another thing is using the term dead animals. You know, they are dead animals. They are dead corpses that people are eating, and that leads nicely on to what I refer to as the morgue aisle in a supermarket. So people actually just you classify it as what it is. It's not a meat aisle, it's a morgue. There's lots of dead animals in there that are rotting. They're rotting corpses. And it's just, it's just we need to introduce these terms like rape, like rapey, like morgue aisle, so that it becomes part of normal um, language. 
and sticks with people, you know what I mean? Like, oh, can you pass me the rape juice? Oh, did you, did you say rape juice? Yeah, no, it's milk. No, it's not. It comes, somebody has to be raped for that, so that's rape juice. Or, uh, I'm not going down that aisle, because it's the morgue aisle. Overall, um, I have personally felt like health benefits from going vegan. I love vegan food, and there's just so much options out there. But my health is better. Um, uh, when I was younger, I used to suffer from insomnia, and like sometimes I wouldn't sleep for like two days, and that's got better through eating uh, plant-based vegan foods. Also, um, my sweating has gone. Um, I can wear a vest out now without um, without sweating at all. Whereas before, I'd have to like wear two t-shirts and wear lots of deodorant and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it's just a sign of um, it's it's positive for my body to not eat dead animals and their secretions. But also, it makes a lot of sense to be vegan. Um, animals don't want to die. Um, if you watch a, a slaughterhouse video, you can see their reaction, you can see their shock. You know, if you, if somebody you knew, or somebody who is the same species as you, got stabbed in front of you, a bolt gun to the head, and then their throat slit, you'd, you'd any, most people would shit themselves, be like, what the fuck's going on? I don't want this to happen. And then like, you know, you don't, people want to live, animals want to live, it's not, we don't have any right to take their life for no reason at all apart from taste, and taste is not a logical reason to stab and kill somebody else. Also, we live on this one planet and we are wasting resources by eating dead animals. We're, we're fattening them up with food that we could be feeding to starving people in the world, but no, um, some people want to fatten up animals first. It just, it's not a logical thing to do as a species. Um, I hope you enjoyed my vegan story. Um, have a good day.